On October 26, 2001, in Fort Worth, Texas, 25-year-old nursing assistant Shantae Jawan Mallard nearly got away with murder. It was a night like any other. Shantae called her best friend upon getting off work, and the pair commenced a typical night out, smoking pot, drinking, and hitting up a nightclub in Arlington. The only thing out of the ordinary on this particular night was that Shantae took ecstasy. Driving while intoxicated, she committed one of the most unusual cases of vehicular homicide ever recorded. On the drive home from the club, Shantae struck a homeless man walking on the side of the road, 37-year-old Gregory Glenn Biggs, sending him into her windshield, where he became stuck. Shantae immediately pulled over and attempted in vain to extract Biggs, who was still alive. Realizing Biggs wasn't budging, Shantae decided to drive on home with the poor homeless man still trapped in her windshield. According to Shantae, Biggs moaned when they hit a bump, but she had nothing else to say on the matter. She pulled her car into her garage, shut the door, and apologized to Biggs for what she had done. She then left him there to die. Shantae would check on Biggs' status from time to time for one or two days, and then when Biggs finally succumbed to his injuries, she contacted a friend named Cleet Jackson to help her dispose of the body. They enlisted the help of Cleet's cousin, Herbert Tyrone Cleveland, and the three of them took the body to a park and left it there. They also burned part of the car in which they'd carried the body in an attempt to disguise the evidence. Biggs's body was found, but his murderer wasn't identified until four months later when Shantae's friend Miranda Daniel told police that Shantae had bragged to her at a party that she'd hit a man with her car and gotten away with it. Shantae stood trial on June 23, 2003. Tarrant County Medical Examiner Nizam Pirwani testified that Biggs would have survived had he been taken to a hospital, something with which other experts concurred. Shantae was convicted of murder, with a 50-year murder sentence and a 10-year evidence tampering sentence to run concurrently. In 2027, she will be eligible for parole. It would seem the case is settled. A wrongful death lawsuit was filed by Brandon, Biggs's son, which was settled out of court. He ultimately decided to forgive Shantae for the murder of his father. Convicted murderers around the country raised $10,000 for Brandon, which they gave to him as a college scholarship. He was only 20 years old at the time of his father's death and was a pastoral ministry student. Still, there remains something puzzling about Shantae's accomplices. Although the arrest warrant affidavit says Shantae originally implicated two men named Vaughn and Terrence in assisting with her crime, it was Jackson and Cleveland who confessed to helping her discard Biggs' body. It isn't known if police ever identified a Vaughn or a Terrence in connection with Biggs' murder. Shantae's relationship with Jackson and Cleveland is also unclear. Jackson's lawyer said his client and Shantae were romantically linked, but oddly enough, relatives of Jackson and Cleveland claimed they had never heard of Shantae before she murdered Biggs. Gregory Biggs' unusual death continues to loom large in the public imagination, as it has inspired several television episodes and movies. It's fortunate that Shantae Mallard, his murderer, was brought to justice, though she nearly evaded arrest. Please keep Biggs and his son Brandon in your thoughts, whose strength to forgive Shantae I deeply commend. If this case shows us anything about the horrors of our world, it's that those typically regarded as heroes, such as nurses, can sometimes turn out to be villains. Thank you guys, stay safe out there, and remember not to get scared out of sorts.